Hi, it's repair time. No, it's not a Death Star or a droid. It's uh, a Sega Toys uh, planetarium. It's actually a really awesome planetarium. I think it's like one of, if not one of the best on the uh, market. And what it does, of course, is it projects just like it is now I'll show you a bit more in a minute actually projects the stars onto your um, ceiling it's really very cool and it's got um, these removable discs and I'll try and uh, put one up to the uh, camera I'll try and put a light behind there but anyway you can get all these different discs with it and it gives you a very uh, realistic view of the night sky in fact this one's uh, particularly notable in that apparently like they are like proper star fields and things like that so they're they're actually accurate um star fields and they project them onto your roof and you know you sleep at night and you get this star field and the thing about this is that um you can actually have it slowly rotate um either north or south it just changes direction uh for here in australia and it's got a shooting star mode as well if you turn that on then every once in a while a little star shoots across your ceiling at night and it is really kind of cool um i really like this thing and it's got an adjustable uh lens on top which um is really multi-turn um fine adjustments got multiple glass lenses and stuff like that apparently um at which focuses uh the image on your ceiling anyway um it is busted while it does actually project you can probably see the light shooting out of there now but anyway um it doesn't rotate anymore and the shooting star mode doesn't work it doesn't shoot across occasionally like it'll like come on and they're just the shooting star trail is there but it doesn't like woo, shoot across and well it has been uh, knocked off the edge of the bed um many many times by the kids it's, yeah it's seen better days so maybe one of those uh you know hard knocks or something did damage to the rotational thing in there if i um turn it on i can actually hear um the motor going inside so here's the disc that's in it we do have uh several others i just put it uh on top of a light source and it's very cool this one actually has uh, some constellations as well as um the milky way star field so it's yeah it just i can't words can't express how good this is at night everything's like super sharp it's beautifully formed and uh the optics in it are just beautiful if you buy one of the uh, like a cheap ass brand planetarium i don't think they're anywhere close as good to this um sega toys one this is i think one of the ducks guts ones on the market oh wow i'm sticking that right on the lens of my camera right on the front <laughs> that's really funky so anyway, here's the uh, tray mechanism and it just sits in here like this. So I assume that there's like rubber wheels in there. In fact, I think I can kind of sort of, yeah, you can kind of sort of see down in there how that work little rollers on the side um, that attach to this. So I assume that they're not making contact. It could be, I don't know, they're not, um, the springy's gone in them or something, maybe. Don't know. Well, those side uh, handles, they didn't uh, do, do or allow me to access anything. So it just reminded me, like, uh, looks like the thermal detonator from Star Wars. Does it not? Like, it's a little bit bigger, but I, I just got the, looking through the camcorder here, looks like he's holding a thermal detonator. Got to assume that it's all plastic catch based, maybe. Well, that's a step forward. Ah, there we go. There's a screw. So is that it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's just one screw. There we go. We're in Lake Flynn. Check that out. It's a little bit dusty, but uh, yeah, we can get access to the... Do they spring back? First, yep, yep, they spring back. So the springs seem intact. Let me plug this sucker in and see what's what. All right, so we're projecting, and if we hit that, looks like we've got a reduction gear down in there, which is supposed to turn this. I mean, it's going to be incredibly slow. It's fascinating. Might have to take the thing off. It's got four screws in there. I'm not seeing or feeling that rotate. So yeah, maybe something, yeah, the motor, I can hear it. This is the shooting star thing because there's a lead in the bottom of there 
it's just got two wires going over. I reckon there's lead in the bottom of that. And that wheel under there, you can't see it. But, ah, ha, ha. You can see a slit down in that. So I think that is how the shooting star works. <laughs> yeah, this is obvious how it works once you uh, put the disc in um, and put on your thinking cap for two seconds. Um, yeah, what I thought might be another um, a belt down there is not. That's, the, that's how it turns the edge of the disc. You can see the disc in there just makes contact with the bottom part of that rubber and that is, I can see it moving, so it is definitely engaging that, so that's not loosey-goosey. So I think the fact, I think that's down in the gear mechanism, down there, is our problem. And as far as the lens assembly, well, there is actually an end stop on that. And this is actually multi-turn, it is actually going up. Jeez, that is, and it will eventually come out, I think. Surely, yep, there we go. So there's the lens assembly, beautiful. So apparently it's multi, uh, it, like it's a multi-glass lens in there. So pretty decent quality. And that's inside the Death Star. Check it out. There you go. All on one PCB. That's just going to be a little micro down in there. Which one is it? Let's take the little QC sticker off there. Get your bets ready. I'm betting a microchip. I reckon it's a microchip jobby. Am I right? Can't damn see it. <laughs> Hold on to your hat. Look what I found inside. Just fell out. Um, yeah. I, I suspect that's needed for something. So we'll find out shortly. But anyway, can't read the damn chip. And well, yep. There's your problem. Um, there's our motor. There's our <laughs> drive. Anyway, that's where that came from. So I need a replacement for that. Unfortunately, I don't have like a replacement belt kit because um, I'm not into like, you know, you would have these if you were servicing uh, tape decks and stuff like that. None of that CD rubbish. Um, although, you know, no, I don't think any CDs, do any CD players actually use a drive belt in them? Usually they're a direct drive. I, I don't know. Anyway, leave it in the comments. 27, 28 millimeters diameter, something like that. And well, you know, you could try and glue that back together, but uh, it's like pretty how you're doing. Um, I don't like my chances. And that is about 0.8 millimeters or so. So like 28 millimeters by 0.8 millimeters, you're not going to typically get that in an O-ring um, set, which I was uh, looking at recently, actually. I can't remember, like, it was only like a month or two ago. I thought, oh, nice to have, like, an O-ring kit or something like that, because I don't actually have one. Um, but you wouldn't typically get, I don't think, that sort of uh, thin diameter, like sub one millimeter diameter in, like, a 30 millimeter uh, odd diameter uh, o-ring like that, they typically come um, thicker. So you would usually get these in little uh, watch um, kits. These would be like o-rings in watch kits. And I checked on eBay and you can't actually buy um, uh, watch kits in like 0.7 millimeter um, diameter one I found. Um, somebody does a little pack here with all different diameters. Um, that might suit. And then I think, well, I'm a bit of a watch aficionado. Um, I've actually got watches and I've actually got two of these Casio FX91Ws in fact I did a second channel video um just doing this watch like rotating like this for like continuously for like 10 minutes or something I'll link it in up here and down below um it was yeah I was going to do a video on the uh on how this has been like, uh, well, the whole history of the FX91W, how it's been manufactured for, I don't know, what is it, 30 years now or something? It's just absolutely crazy. Um, and it's, you know, it's the watch of choice for terrorists, of course. Um, it's, it's the watch of Osama Bin Laden uh, wore one, um, as did uh, Clinton, I think, um, wore an FX91W. Um, so make that of <laughs> what you will. Um, but anyway, yes, yeah, so I was going to do like a video on that. And then I've had this sitting here for ages so anyway um i thought maybe just as a fix that looks like it might actually match because the o-ring is going to be I, I think i believe it has an o-ring um it is water resistant um so yeah it, that might 
work. I'm going to crack that open. And there it is. Um, it looks like it's not round. <laughs> is that going to pop out of there? Anyway, this is the world's best-selling watch. Casio FX 91W, an absolute classic. Can I get that out? Ah, oh, no, no. It's like, oh, what a bummer. Doesn't use a regular. Nah, I thought that might have been a round O-ring inside. I haven't looked inside one of these for decades. So, <laughs> yeah, nah. Oh, didn't, no, that's not going to work. It's got like thick sections and thin sections and stuff. No, scrap that idea. Anyway, that was worth a shot. So I looked at a few old uh, watches I had lying around. Unfortunately, they were all too big. So there's the uh, original. And nah, it's going to be loosey-goosey in there. So they're no good at all. There's nothing you can do. So uh, the only thing I could <laughs> do at this stage, um, I've ordered an, like a um, O-ring uh, kit. Um, so hopefully I can fix it uh, properly later. These are a number 10 rubber band and yes uh, rubber bands do actually have a like size chart index thing. Here it is. Um, and hopefully that will, uh, that is smaller than that, but it should then just expand. I mean you can obviously, you know, it's a rubber band, you can expand them out uh, quite large, but that should probably just have enough tension on it I think. Um, the only other one I could get was a number eight um, and that came in a huge like half kilo bag of the thing so I think this one will do the trick. So it looks like I've got to take this top plate off here. Um, interestingly there's the motor in there. It's got a nice little uh, die cast alloy um, thing surrounding the motor. This got a nice big chunky um, thing that holds the motor in place. I like that. Um, that's, I guess, to stop any movement, uh, vibration or whatever, to dampen it. Whatever that's doing, um, it's a very nice touch. I like it. Now the thing is, I don't really understand why they use uh, the rubber bands at all. Why couldn't you have just like a cog come out there, a small cog on there, driving this cog, and then they got another, the O-ringy uh, belt thing. Uh, belt is the correct um, term under there to drive that which then drives that like why I I don't understand and then of course they've got another one on the bottom which then um, drives the shooting star uh, wheel here um, so it, I I don't know why you'd bother hopefully that lifts off like that aha there you go winner winner chicken dinner that's nice design. So then we can get the belt on and then that just uh, the cutout in here just goes over the belt. So this is a uh, little bit bigger than uh, the 0.8 millimeters we had before, but no wackers. Let's see if it works. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yep. That's just got enough tension on it. I think that's going to be a winner. Yep. Number 10 rubber band back on. That rubber band is very close to the plastic there. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit how you're doing, but no wackers. We'll give it a go. So, let's turn it on. Ta da! Ha <laughs> ha! Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, something's getting stuck. Oh, look at that. I don't think it's supposed to do that. Like, the motor is kind of like, it's like losing torque there. It's a rubber band. I mean, it could be touching. Yeah, it doesn't take much to to stop it, unfortunately. Damn, that rubber band is not perfect, I'm afraid. No, there we go. It's come good now. There we go. Yeah, that's <laughs> the angle of the rubber band, I think, on there. Because it's not round. It's like these are like square rubber bands. So it's actually on an angle. It's actually... um not flat of course because it goes into uh the curved um uh, friction wheel so it bends it wants to bend 45 degrees to put the corner in there so there's a corner sticking out but there you go it's actually running um fantastic i'll put it back together and see if we can project winner winner chicken dinner down in the dungeon catch you next time Thank <laughs> you.